Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Lewis Crenn, family medicine physician. And in today's video, I'm going to cover three broad topics. The first topic I'm going to talk about is what it's like currently in my local area, because unfortunately, I have the privilege of both living and working in what is currently considered the epicenter of the United States COVID outbreak. Secondly, I want to talk a little bit about vaccines. There's been some new information come out since my last video. Talk a little bit about myocarditis, uh, maybe talk about booster shots. And then I want to talk a little bit about treatment. So I've been getting a lot of questions about uh, if I get COVID, what can you do to help me? Uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, what the treatments currently are being offered if you're hospitalized. And then we'll talk a little bit about uh, some new outpatient treatments that are available for specific individuals. And then finally, uh, I'll talk a little bit about everybody's favorite uh, potential treatment, ivermectin. Let's get started. First, a quick update of what it's like in my local area. If you've been following the U.S. news on the COVID pandemic, you've probably heard or seen statements or even seen news uh, segments with the CEOs of both uh, local hospitals because unfortunately we've been in the news a lot. Uh, I currently live and work in southwest Missouri which as I said is currently showing the highest rate per capita of new infections in the United States and unfortunately we're feeling that. We're seeing our hospitals fill up. We have not been below 100 admissions per day for quite some time now and I know that you know on the surface maybe doesn't seem like a lot um, but if you consider that the hospitals are also now catering to individuals who put off health care last year um, and are now coming back to the healthcare system to receive care you've got your strokes that show up heart attacks um, when you put all of that together our our health systems are full there's two main health systems in my area um, fairly large level one trauma centers but unfortunately, while we have plenty of beds, we don't always have the right equipment available. The other health system, the one that I don't work for, uh, made news recently for mentioning that they were running out of ventilators. And then my health system has actually run out of staff. So these patients who get admitted with COVID-19, unfortunately, are very sick currently. They require a lot of care from nursing staff, respiratory therapists, physicians, and unfortunately, we're just simply running out of people to take care of these folks. And unfortunately, are having to transfer some people out of the area. I personally have had at least one of my patients that I know of transferred to another state because there's not been a bed available. I know, uh, again, there was a news report that one of our patients actually got transferred all the way to Dallas, Texas, which is about eight hours from here, um, due to not being able to find a bed even in our state. We are seeing, as you've probably heard, Younger and younger patients become extremely sick. I personally right now am caring for an individual who um, is in their mid-20s, previously healthy, not necessarily um, obese, no comorbid conditions, and unfortunately was hospitalized for a week and has been on oxygen for the past two to three weeks and shows no signs of coming off. And I'm not talking just a little bit of oxygen. I'm talking four liters of oxygen chronically all day long, all night long. This was a previously healthy person who... Um, was very active prior to getting COVID-19. 90 plus percent of the patients that we're seeing are infected with the Delta variant, which we know by now is much more infectious and causes much more severe disease, even in the young and healthy. So if you think you're young and healthy and bulletproof, you might want to start thinking again, because that's not the experience that we're having right now. What we're seeing right now, uh, patients are becoming younger and younger, teenagers, 20-somethings, 30-somethings, people who are used to being young and healthy and frankly laughing off a cold and getting over it in a couple of days are now calling me up routinely saying, I've got COVID, I feel like crud, it's been a couple of weeks, you've got to make me better. And my answer to them is unfortunately, I can't. It's just time that will make you better, hopefully. Because we now know that approximately three-fourths of patients with COVID have some sort of long-term condition. Those of you who think, oh, this is no big deal, I hate to tell you, it's a big deal uh, for everybody, not just the elderly and the sick. So please heed the experience that we're seeing because unfortunately, what's happening in our area, especially if your community is under-vaccinated like ours is, 
is coming to you soon. There's no doubt about it. I'm not trying to scare you. That's just reality. That's kind of what it's like in our area right now. It's, it's not fun to work in healthcare. Those of us that have been doing this for 18 months now are frankly getting burnt out, worn out on a regular basis, tired of seeing people get sick when we know there's a treatment that would prevent them from getting severely ill and do fairly well at preventing them from getting sick in the first place. Don't get me wrong, we all show up every day and do our jobs to the best of our abilities because that's what we've been called to do. But that doesn't mean it's frustrating to go in day after day and treat patients that we know through a simple vaccine their illness could have been prevented. Now, I don't work in the hospital, I work in the clinic, and I know I'm frustrated and worn out. I can't imagine what my colleagues who have been suiting up and going into our COVID ICU every day feel like. I know their frustration level has to be 10 times higher than mine. And it's frustrating to everybody in healthcare to see something that can be prevented, at least severe disease and death, can be easily prevented with a simple vaccination that has been proven over and over and over again to be safe and effective. Now, let's spend a little bit of time talking about the vaccines because of course they've been in the news a lot and there's been a couple of updates. So unfortunately, we have seen some increasing incidence of myocarditis. Myocarditis is an inflammation around the heart. We've seen it more commonly in young male individuals with the Moderna or the Pfizer vaccines. However, if you look at the data, the vaccine is still considered to be safer than getting COVID itself because we also know that COVID can cause myocarditis at a much higher rate than the vaccine is currently being seen. And we know that there are other long-term or perhaps just short-term symptoms that come along with COVID. So when you look at the risk-benefit analysis, the risk of getting COVID and having myocarditis or other long-term or even short-term complications of COVID far outweigh the risk of getting the vaccine and the potential for developing myocarditis. Now, if you're concerned about that, you're a young, healthy male, think of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. At least you're doing something, not sitting there doing nothing. Because the Johnson & Johnson vaccine while, unfortunately, it has been shown to have a higher incidence of blood clots in particularly women, for a young, healthy male, there's no significant increase in blood clots. And again, keep in mind, COVID itself can cause blood clots. So if you're a female, perhaps less than 40, then maybe consider getting the mRNA vaccines, and they would be an excellent choice for you. So just because one has been shown to maybe have a very small increase in potential complications doesn't mean there isn't another choice available for you. So if you're concerned about one of those two potential complications, then just get the one that fits your situation better. All right, now let's talk to that vaccine hesitant group. If you have questions about the vaccine, if you're unsure about something, please leave me a note in the comments and let me know what those questions are. I'm happy to try to answer them to the best of my ability. If you're a patient of mine, Schedule an appointment or give me a call and come in and let's talk about it. Unfortunately, we have a lot of individuals who are hesitant. They're not necessarily against the vaccine. They just have some questions and need those questions answered. If you're not in the local area, then find your trusted healthcare provider and ask them. Don't just sit there and wonder because unfortunately, now is the time to get the vaccine. Waiting much longer may end up in you getting COVID. I've had several patients who have expressed regret that they didn't ask or act sooner. And while we're at it, another quick update on the vaccine. Um, they are showing great efficacy still against the Delta variant, which is now currently the most commonly circulating variant in the United States. Well over 50% of the samples uh, are Delta, and that's just going to continue to climb. They're still over 90% effective at preventing severe disease and death. In fact, in our local hospital, as far as I know, we've not had a single death and somebody who's been fully vaccinated. We have had a couple of individuals end up in the hospital with um, COVID after being fully vaccinated, but their severity was not as significant and they didn't die. The overwhelming majority of individuals in our hospital, I believe last time I heard it was over 98% of individuals in our hospital had not been vaccinated or had not been fully vaccinated. And I believe that's the same experience that the other health system in our town is, is having as well. So we know 
both our local experience as well as the statistics that we've gotten from the researchers around the world, the vaccines are still very effective against even the new variant that's out there. Now, you may have seen news that came out last week from the CEO of Pfizer talking about a third dose or a third booster. Um, I think it's still too early to tell on that. I think we're going to need some more time to know whether the vaccines have waned enough or we've had enough change in the virus to need a booster. But um, I think we'll have to let the science play out just a little bit longer before we're really going to know whether a booster of any of the vaccines is going to be necessary. And finally, I want to talk a little bit about treatment. So if you get to the point where unfortunately you get COVID, either because you haven't been vaccinated or you were one of the breakthrough cases that unfortunately we do expect to happen, there are a few treatments that are available. Um, there's one that we've been giving for quite a while now called remdesivir. That one is only available if you're sick enough to be hospitalized. We also give dexamethasone if you're hospitalized as well. That's a steroid given intravenously. Now, if you're sick but not sick enough to be hospitalized, there are some new treatments also available, and we have been doing that in our area for quite some time. We just recently switched to uh, a new version of what's called monoclonal antibodies. Um, the one we're giving currently is called Regeneron, which does uh, thankfully have activity against the Delta variant. Now, it has to be done um, within a certain time frame of getting sick. So if you do get sick, be sure and reach out to your provider and see if that's something that you qualify. There are some specific um, parameters that you have to qualify under for that drug to be able to be used in your uh, individual situation. So just reach out to your provider if, if you do have COVID or if you get COVID in the future and want to be considered for that. The last treatment that uh, seems to just keep coming back, no matter how many times we uh, it gets refuted in studies, is, of course, ivermectin. There was a study uh, published uh, just a few days ago, I believe last week, um, that was a randomized controlled trial that uh, unfortunately showed ivermectin not to be effective. Um, I know there's uh, a lot of hope in that drug because it's cheap, it's widely available, but unfortunately with the studies that we keep getting, it just doesn't seem to be um, doing any good. It's kind of falling along the same lines of hydroxychloroquine. Lots of hope, but not much potential. Uh, I do believe there are still some large, uh, larger ongoing studies, uh, one particularly in the UK. So we'll see if there's some additional information that comes out that actually shows that it's effective. Then I don't think anybody would hesitate to use it, but right now it can't necessarily be recommended for use because we just don't have the data that supports that. Uh, I've been asked about vitamins along the way. Unfortunately, those studies really haven't shown a whole lot of benefit. Um, cal or, uh, vitamin C, zinc, vitamin D really haven't shown uh, in the studies to be of much benefit, with the exception of uh, perhaps maybe vitamin D. If you actually have a low vitamin D level, um, then there probably is some benefit there. Um, but beyond that, I have not seen any studies that have shown that. If, if you have some information that maybe I'm not aware of, please leave me a comment down below. I'm happy to take a look at it. Okay, so that's just a quick recap of what we're seeing in my area as, what's, as well as what's going on around the country and around the world um, with the virus, with the vaccines, with the treatment. So I hope you found this information useful. Um, if you have, I appreciate you liking this video. Maybe leave me a comment down below and let me know whether you've been vaccinated or not and what your experience has been. And as always, stay safe out there.